Okay, so here brings us to our last concept for 4.2. And so far we've talked about events, outcomes, theoretical probability. So everything we've been doing in this lesson has been theoretical, right? In theory, I should have four out of 52 chances to pick a king. Um, now we're going to talk about overlapping versus disjoint events, okay? So two events are disjoint if they cannot occur at the same time or together. So an example of that is you're rolling two dice or two die, so you're rolling dice. Um, and you, you either get a sum of six, right? So maybe one die has three, the other one has three. Or you get a sum of 12. So one die has six and one die has 12. I'm sorry, another six to get 12. You can't have that happen at the same time. You know, if you're just rolling two die, it's either going to give you a sum of six or not, or it's going to give you a sum of 12 or not. You're not going to get a sum of 12 and a sum of six. Now, two events are overlapping. This is when we have some problems. When they can occur at the same time or together. The reason for this is why it's an issue is because we, are, we tend to overcount. So an example of overlapping events, like bringing us back to those Venn diagrams, is when you have blonde hair and green eyes. That can happen at the same time. And so this brings us to this idea of when we ask for or probabilities. So we have covered ands, and that's when you use that operation of multiplication. If events A and B are disjoint, life is good. So the probability of either A or, keyword there, B occurs, it will be the probability of A plus the probability of B. Now, if these events are overlapping, then we have to deal with the fact of, okay, we still add, but we have to take away where they overlap. So a visual of that, bringing us back to our Venn diagrams, here's A happening and B happening. And I'm gonna just label this one, two, and three. Well, if I added, you know, this piece, and let me get a different color for you, plus this piece, you can see here is the overlap, right? So I've added that twice, hence why you have to take it away. If they're disjoint, it looks like that, and life is good, there is no overlap, hence why you can just add them together. So a key thing here is when you have an and probability, you use multiplication. An or probability is addition. Now the reason for that is because or is either one or the other one or both are true, right? And means they have to be both true. Okay, so let's do an example. Example nine, a basket contains a strawberry, a lime, a yellow squash, and a green pepper. So I can see there, there's one, two, three, four possible outcomes. So I know what my denominator will be. Now A says, what is the probability that you choose a fruit or, keyword there, something yellow? Well, a strawberry is a fruit and a lime is a fruit. So you could jump the gun and say two out of four, or if you want to do it step by step, it would be one fourth plus the other option, which is the lime, one out of four. And then here's the only thing yellow out of this list. So that's why I'm going to add one out of four again. So I get three fourths. 
Another option was, okay, wait, I have two fruits out of the four options and I only have something yellow. So these things are known, so I get the same answer. This is known as disjoint, right? There was no overlap. It's either fruit or yellow with these outcomes. But now it says, find the probability you choose a fruit or something green. So the probability of fruit or green, well, we know it's two out of four chances we get a fruit, right? It's either a strawberry or a lime. Plus, you have the lime is green, right? And the green pepper is green, so there's two out of four. The problem is, this guy, right, the lime is green and a fruit. So I overcounted, so I have to take that away. And so I get three fourths again. The other option was you could have said, no, Stephanie, it's two out of four. And then I just won't count that lime again and I just count that green pepper. That works too. But I really wanted to show you taking away the overcounting if it's not terribly clear. So these are known as overlapping. Okay, our last example. If a card is drawn from a standard deck of 52 cards, find the probability that a card is an ace or a red card. So probability ace or red. Okay, we can go back to that visual. Um, to save us time, I know there's four aces out of the deck, okay, plus, and with the or, we're going to do replacement, okay. Um, reds, if we go back, I'm going to make you a little bit dizzy. <laughs> um, here's my visual. Here are all my reds. It is half the deck, okay, so that's going to be... 26 out of the 52. But didn't we count this ace and this ace again? Right? Those were already counted in the one, two, three, four aces. So that is why. I have to take away where they overlap, and that was 2 out of the 52. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So, four aces, half the deck is red, but unfortunately we counted, we overcounted. These two red aces were counted here, so we want to take it away. So this is an overlapping problem. So again, with fractions, you go straight across. So it's 4 plus 26 is 30. Take away the 2. We get 28 out of 52. All right. And you can, you know, reduce the fraction if it asks you to, and you can rely on your calculator to do that. Or um, you can put it in as a decimal, but let's actually just reduce that together real quick. I can see they're both divisible by 2. So 28 divided by 2 is 14, and 52 divided by 2 is 26. But I didn't reduce by the largest number because I just went with 2 because I knew they were even. So I need to reduce these by 2 again. So 2 goes into 14 7 times, and 2 goes into 26 13 times. So this cannot be reduced anymore. So this is known as a reduced fraction. Again, it all depends on how they want the answer. All right, class, email me if you have any questions. Bye-bye.